Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. BGG here from DinarUpdates.com. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Going to be a short, quick call. We had a bunch of technical difficulties and uh, people, uh, personnel issues. Uh, Loop is sick. He and his family could obviously use your prayers. You're not feeling very good. Um, Mr. White was was uh, called away on some business, and he would maybe be here for a later call, but. Uh, what we decided that we would do is uh, we were going to come on here and cover a couple of quick little points and uh, actually do a call tonight, and then we'll come back and try and get and round everybody up for the big call uh, tomorrow night. So we were going to do something of a news time or a call tomorrow night anyway. We're going to follow that up with a, uh, with a big call afterwards. So we are going to try and do a news time tomorrow as per usual, and then uh, maybe we'll scooch that up a little bit and do a big call afterwards. But I want to make sure I get everybody a chance to uh, to get on the call. There's a bunch of good good comments and people that you uh, probably should hear. Uh, real quick, before we get going, I want to make sure I thank our mods, copiers, chat people, our Facebook, uh, our DU Facebook crew. Fantastic bunch. People digging for news all day long, every day. Uh, I just nothing irks me worse than somebody rolling in and saying, "Hey, is there any news?" If there, if you have to ask that question, you haven't looked at anything yet because we've got the Facebook people that go all day long every day. We've got the chat people that go all day long every day. Then they copy it to the forum in the chat logs, and then we've got the forum people that bring in news all day long every day. So there's always news, and our people are always digging it. And the broad base of the news right now, by the way, folks, I had, I had several people text me today, hey, I need some good news. Well, you obviously aren't just looking around you, because it's everywhere. I mean, the news is fantastic. On you know, just throw a rock in any direction and you get good news. Does that mean today or tomorrow? Probably not, because I'm going to address some of that uh, right now. But I want to make sure I thank all the people that make Dinar updates, the 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 you know the the cross section, all the people that make this website what it is. We could not do it without you. Uh, Day Trader asked me one time. He said, "How many people does it take to make this thing work?" And I said, "Every single one of them. No one is unimportant here." And I appreciate everybody who pitches in. Sheila, three, thank you for copying today. You are uh, you're an all star. So thank you so much. And Subby, uh, appreciate you hanging in there all this time. So uh, here we go. We're going to talk about the, uh, real quick though. Also, want to make sure we thank Dinar uh, Recaps, Dinar uh, IQD Calls, Dinar Detectives, anybody else who advertised or called. Thank you so much. Uh, there was something I was going to say about. So there was uh, the blog and the Observer are pretty good today, uh, and they, as they are every day. However, I will caution you about the Observer: is that it's been getting more and more difficult to to publish non BS commentary. Uh, I one of the things I do on the Observer, dinarupdates.com forward slash Observer. I post that every single day, and I try to update it a couple of times a day, uh, and I do post other people's commentary. But I I will tell you this right now. As I read through some of this goofy stuff, if it's pure goofiness, I throw it. I just I don't. I won't post it. I won't do it anymore. I've done it. You know, even the the borderline stuff. I throw that stuff out. If it's not fact based or information based or reality based, you're not going to see it here. We just don't do it. Not even on the Observer. I know that I I've always held up the Observer as kind of a a place that you can get commentary from around the. Uh, Community. Uh, however, at this point, it's where you're going to get common sense commentary from around the community because I have, you know, as I look around and read some of the nutty things out there, it's, I can't post it. Not even, not even on the funny pages. I just won't do it. So that's what you get on the Observer. The blog is more news-based stuff. Over two or three, you know, sometimes I leave the same articles up because they're so impactful, and you know, I'm not going to just throw articles, in, sling stuff up there. Uh, you know, I want to make sure on the blog we get the most critical stuff as I read over everything. So that's that's uh, that's what that's all about. Okay, there's something else I'm missing. Uh, it's really it's uh, throwing me off my game here that we're we're missing our we really need our crew. Uh, but it's going to be myself and Andrew. We got several really interesting pieces. Going back to uh, we had a, we had a we had a private call a couple of days ago. When we were talking about what we we're going to talk about on this call. One of the things that gets missed about this whole this airline article a couple of days ago, and there are so many misconceptions, misrepresentations, and plain out silliness about this. That particular article verbatim didn't, it, it, 
it doesn't say what these people are saying it said. If you look at the various translations, two or three of them, hold them up, compare the translations, ultimately what it boils down to, and this is what I like to do. I like to read them all over. I don't want to get you lost in the details, but I want to read over several different versions and come out with what I think it actually means. This is, uh, it is good news, very good news, actually. In fact, I'm going to explain what the good news is. What's the, com that, what's the common thread behind this? Number one, uh, the airline article where they were only going to accept IQD for their flights is not, is not every single flight. It was particularly as it relates to a couple of ministries in Iraq. They were, they were, they were pointed at those particular ministries, and they only wanted those ministries to give them IQD. I'm going to explain this in a minute. This was a, this was a, this was a leak, a representation, some information out of a board meeting of a privately held airline. It wasn't any, you know, it wasn't any announcement of Iraq's currency being internationally recognized. That's, that's stupidity. That's not what the article said. If you, if you, if you, and speaking of plain English, uh, Woody from East Tennessee, just northeast of the lake, you need to work on your plain English. You came into our chat room the other night and had some commentary. Uh, plain English, buddy. Work on it. English as a first language. You know, don't call people liars when you are completely misrepresenting what you're talking about. Back to this mis misrepresentation. Uh, this private company had a board meeting. They let the they let, somehow the information got out and, and it got written about several different ways, particularly as it relates to the currency. But what they were saying is there were a couple of specific ministries they wanted to uh, they wanted to pay for their flights, which they were already buying. They wanted to pay for those flights in IQD. Now, that's the real story behind the article. Stop for a just a quick second and think about what that real story means. Historically, your, uh, your Iraqis, Iraqi business people, anybody in the Iraqi hierarchy, they would always poo-poo the, the, uh, the dinar. That's worthless. It's junk. It's, paper, you know, it's toilet paper. Who wants that? We want U.S. dollars. Stop and think for a second what's going on here. These are Iraqi businessmen who have stopped the flow of U.S. dollars and said that they only want to deal with Iraqi dinar. Ask yourself why. That's number one. Number two is if they were in the and, – and always private business. Always the free market economy always works better than anything else. Now, if you're an Iraqi businessman, where are you going to go to procure the most reputable, solid source of Iraqi dinar if you're going to buy it in, in bulk. Ask yourself that. So essentially, they were already doing business with Iraqi ministries who were buying airplane tickets. And then number three, uh, what they can do is, is this kind of makes that burden a little bit easier. The, uh, the 3-0 note equation, there's the the downside of this is that that would be putting large notes back in the marketplace. But that's not exactly these particular uh, ministry-centric problem. They're not worried about that. They have, they have a certain budget. They have a certain number, amount of money. And typically, internal projects, internal in-country, they would actually have to go out and buy U.S. dollars if the airline wanted U.S. dollars. This, this kind of is a win-win for everybody, basically. The independent businessmen get to buy dinar. For some reason, they decided just now that they want dinar. They, uh, get a, they get a highly qualified, known source of quality dinar. They don't have to worry about taking in fake dollars and all that baloney. And then the last uh, piece of the pie is that this internal ministry is going to have ready access to dinar. They already have dinar. The, the GOI has already gone back, used their petrodollars, bought a racket dinar, for various internal projects, this is obviously one of them. So uh, what does that article mean? Ultimately, when you boil it all down, it's fantastic news, folks. Why would an internal, why would a private company in Iraq, likely in the know, having very, very good contacts in the government, why in the world would they decide that they want to buy Iraqi dinar right now? Essentially what they're doing. You know, if you, if you boil it all down, 
to its most simplest concept, this particular corporation has decided that they want to they want to be IQD heavy right this minute. I would tend to believe that that's pretty fantastic news for all of us. Number two, I'm going to get to a uh, piece of crazy news. I couldn't believe this when I read it. <clears throat> I'm trying to find this. What day was this? 13. Blah, blah, blah. Hang on, people. It's going to be good. I'm going to, when I get to this, I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to talk about it, and you're going to like it a lot. Um, Do you, do, do, Andrew, do you remember what day the Baby Eagle story was? The what story? The Baby Eagle story. I can't re- recollect offhand. Hang on. Bear with me just one second here. Because I want to read it verbatim, and then I want to talk about it. Do you care if I go with my story first? You know what? Why don't you do that? Actually, you know what? Uh, Andrew had a great story for you guys. Uh, excuse me, us. It was a great article, it, and it kind of de- dovetails on what I had mentioned a couple of days ago. I talked about Maliki. He looks like, you know, stick a fork in him. He's done. There's some real serious stuff uh, coming about. Uh, I, I mentioned this, and it got airplay everywhere. Uh, there's some real serious news articles about Maliki and, and some of his monkey business. But go ahead and read that article, Andrew, and we'll talk about it. Now, I'll, I'll come back to this piece just as soon as you're done. So take it away. All right, let me ask you a question first. What do they do with people that steal over there in the, in the uh, Middle East and Arabic, like cut, Saudi Arabia? Cut, cut their hands off, man. <laughs> All right, title of the article, Marsut. Masood Barzani, we support Al Sadir's efforts to cut off the hands of Al Maliki. Announced the presidency of the Kurdistan region of Iraq on Wednesday, expressed support for the movements of the cleric Muqtada Al Sadir, the last to change the electoral commission, noting that Al Sadir seeks to amputation of the hand of Vice President Nouri Al Maliki and his aides. The head of the office of the presidency of the Kurdistan region, Fuad Hussein, he followed that the existing difference between the Shiites much larger, much larger than the subject of the changing of the electoral commission and the differences between them may reach a level of war. Hussein added that al-Maliki is now doing all it can in order to return power. In the return of al-Maliki, Iraq is heading toward a dark era and the differences between the Shiites and the Kurds will be exaggerated. He pointed out that Hussein Muqtada al-Sadr wanted to amputate the hand of al-Maliki and his aide from now by changing the electoral commission, and this is not just about him, but that the Kurdistan Democratic Party, the strongest political party in the Kurdistan region, blessed these attempts, Chess. So there you go. Uh, Well... I mean, long story short, you know, Maliki's kind of squirming around, but there was a, there was that article that I talked about the other day. That just it was it was like stick a fork in Maliki, he's done. I mean, he's he's uh, with with the uh, with the with the sh- political chicanery that he's been up to. There's just no way. And a lot of what you're seeing in Iraq about this this uh, this this forward financial velocity and the United Nations World Bank, uh, the IMF. Uh, all the various international factions that are in Iraq right now, there's just no way that Maliki gets, he's, he's going to be dealt with fairly soon, fairly soon. Fantastic, very good article, very good article. Is that, uh, uh, and the, that is a little bit of a Kurdish slant on things, which is, you know, the Kurds have warned it against Maliki, you know, they have a little apprehension about Maliki, because, you know, life for everybody gets a lot, gets a lot worse under a Shia hardliner like that. So, that's exactly what the gist of the article was, as that they're kind of blessing. And very interesting uh, that there's two guys on the same side of the fence that, that you're not seeing, that, that kind of a, a little uh, under-the-table alliance as Hakeem and Sadir. Very interesting. So appreciate that article, Andrew. Good stuff. Great finds. You actually found that right before we got on the call, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yeah. That was a very good find, and it was a good piece. And it's relevant to the... To the uh, Economic and political future of Iraq. Here is. Yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll post that on the blog later. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. Uh, here is the article I was looking for. 
is one of the one of the gurus, and I'm just going to tell you, stay away from the blue couch. Stuff happens on that blue couch you just don't want to, you don't want being on. Uh, uh, commentary says this: time is up. We do not give you a date. We do not give you a rate. There is a 72 hours. There's a period of 72 hours that will be given to Iraq. And in my opinion, the 72 hours is up. 72 hours begin when all the agencies, the UN, IMF, World Bank. Uh, we're in agreement with Iraq. When all the work was complete, I believe they've completed a lot of steps for the monetary reform, and the period of 72 hours is up, in my opinion. The 72 hours is a time period, is a, is a time to prepare in which Iraq would release a new rate, and that, I believe that that time is up. In my opinion, Iraq is being thrown off a cliff like a baby eagle, and we expect it to fly. This is a time to celebrate. Now, I'm going to tell you this. That is a fundamental lack of understanding of what is actually going on in the whole environment. It's just exactly bass backwards. And you heard me right. It's bass backwards. Iraq is not being forced to do anything. Iraq wants to do this in the worst possible way. But what Iraq needs is international acceptance. It doesn't matter what you price your currency or your product or your widget or whatever at it doesn't matter if no one's interested in buying it at that price. It's called the free market economy. Here's the, here's the situation for the international community to accept Iraq and whatever their value is going to be. There are some things that Iraq is going to have to get straight. And that is exactly, I'm, I'm, I'm coming more and more to this conclusion. What the full list is, I do not know. Mosul is on the list, uh, probably some version. I don't believe that they have to have a, have a whole national reconciliation, everybody on the same page, everybody holding hands and singing kumbaya. But it looks like that they have to have some version or some something in the pipeline to make this world community happy. And, by the way, just so everybody knows, all of this massive support that we see coming down the pipe, pipe is, has not reached Iraq yet. It's not there yet. It's on the way. They've gotten certain tastes so to speak. They're getting a little bit here, a little bit there. They're getting all kinds of, you know, agreement signed. They've gotten stuff, you know, in the pipe, but it's not there yet. And the reason it's not there is because they have the final few things to get worked out before they move into the, into the promised land. And, uh, and currency reform and economic reform absolutely are prior, part of that promised land. There's no question. But this business about there's a 72-hour time period, First of all, these characters wouldn't know what the what the UN, IMF, and World Bank wanted, or where they were, or what their movements were. Period. Nobody knows that stuff. To to assume that that this is accurate uh, dissertation is just silly. Nobody knows where those people are, what they're doing, or what their level of, of, of agreement is. In fact, if you just simply read the articles, you can tell pretty much what the tone and tenor of is uh, is of those three agencies. Uh, and it's not, there, there's no way, shape, or form have they mentioned anything about 72 hours. They are, all, they are talking in a very positive tone. They're talking about very soon. I think there are some things that Iraq needs to get handled, and they are on the way to doing all those things. I don't think, listen, don't construe this to believe, to imagine that this can't happen today, tomorrow, or a week from now. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is this is a fundamental mischaracterization of what is actually going on. Iraq isn't like a, a baby a baby eagle getting thrown out the thrown off the cliff. They're like a baby eagle trying to jump out the nest as po- as quick as possible, uh, and they're not being allowed just yet because they're not quite ready for that. And they look like they are. They look like they are doing everything possible to get that done. Uh, forward velocity is fantastic. It's very very exciting time, but uh, to say that they're going to be forced to do this that's simply not true. Uh, there are going to be. I, I personally think I'm going to give you the bottom line. I think that there is a there is a price tag on Iraq's international acceptance. I think that price tag is probably Mosul and no racism. I think it boils down to two critical comments. And I think when those uh, and when I say that sectarianism, you know, the, sectarianism is such a clean word. It's it's so uh, uh, it's so intellectual and it means something but it boils down to just plain old racism. And I think the world has, has kind of is fed up with it. They're tired of it, and they want it gone. And, uh, and they want some real-life progress on that front. 
And I think that's the other reason probably why you won't see Maliki. And by the way, I'm not guaranteeing anybody. There's a, some joker came into our chat room and said, I guaranteed something somewhere down the line, and it's just foolish. I'm not guaranteeing anybody anything. I'm, I'm giving some commentary on what I believe the news, the actual news is, uh, and what uh, exactly, and commentary on what the United Nations, the World Bank, and the IMF have said plainly. Uh, and by the way, Woody, uh, to say that anybody's guaranteed anything or said anything or lied about anything, let me help you. Did the SIGR, did the Special Inspector General for the Re- Reconstruction of Iraq lie to the United States Congress? Why don't you go read that, pal? English, first language. That's the end of our call. Andrew, thank you so much. Everybody who tuned in, appreciate it. That was the commentary I have for tonight. Uh, tune in tomorrow night. We're going to have the full supporting cast. I apologize about tonight. Luke took sick. Alan got called away. A couple of our folks couldn't make it, so uh, I decided to come in and do this anyway and cover some important stuff. Iraq's not getting pushed out of the nest. They want to jump out the nest so bad they can't see straight. But, for instance, actually, just let me, let me back this up for a second. For instance, what happened to their last bond offering? Uh, well, you know, last, a while back they tried to do a bond offering. What happened? Nobody would buy it. They wouldn't buy it at any kind of a premium. They wouldn't even buy it at all. And the point is they didn't have international acceptance, and that is exactly the difference. Right now they are moving straight forward. The United States is guaranteeing those bond offerings, but they are guaranteeing them at a price. And what is that price? Price is coming down the pipe pretty, pretty soon. Iraq set up, take notice and they are doing what they have to do. So that's our call. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate you for tuning in. We're going to come back tomorrow night, recover the same information and some more information. So uh, hang in there, and we will be back at you tomorrow. More news, more dinar commentary, and more uh, dinar info as we're able. Have a great night.